It was cold this morning when I got up here in Austin, Texas, 36 degrees. So before I left for the job site, the first thing I did was I grabbed my big puffy jacket. Now, why don't we think about puffy jackets for our houses for a minute? You know, when we think about our houses, most of the time we're just stuffing insulation in between our framing. But that puffy jacket for a house, that's our exterior insulation. On this house behind me, believe it or not, I've got a big puffy jacket on this house. Quite a bit on the roof, a little bit on the walls. Today's build show, all about Monopoly framing. Let's get going. All right guys, so if you saw my Monopoly framing video, that was my house under construction. And you notice that when I framed my house, the house had no overhangs. Now, believe it or not, this house behind us framed the exact same method. What I love about this method is when you get done, you know, we're not quite done with framing, but we've got the roof on. It looks like a normal roof, but if you were to peel back those layers on this roof, you'd notice that I have a big puffy jacket on top of the roof. And I have some exterior insulation as well, but it's buried in the wall. This is that zip R insulation that has sheathing and insulation combined. So let's rewind time for a minute. When we framed this house, we framed it like a monopoly piece. There was really no overhangs. We went from the walls and transitioned right from the roof. In other words, when we framed the roof rafters, this is a traditional hand cut roof, we cut those rafters at the wall and then we ran the sheathing from the wall all the way up so that the wall sheathing was basically touching the roof sheathing. Now, why would we do that? The biggest reason is because we want a really tight air seal on the outside of the house. And by using that zip system sheathing, I'm able to get a really tight seal from the foundation all the way to the ridge of the house and back down again. But I wanted that big puffy jacket. So how do we do that on this house? As I mentioned earlier, the walls have a little bit of insulation already on them because these have the zip R. I'm also utilizing T studs, which will get me a thermal break. But on the roof, what I did was I ran two layers of poly ISO insulation. Now Hunter panels provided this material. This is a company that makes all kinds of different rooftop insulation. And this is a little different than what I did on my house. On my house, before I ran two layers, and then I put the top layer on of zip sheathing. So that was basically like a SIPS roof of structural insulated panel. But on this house, I ran one layer and then the second layer is bonded to plywood. This is their, their specialty product from Hunter. It basically has two inches of poly ISO, and then it has a spacer block for airflow, and then I've got 5 8 plywood on top of that. Now the big benefit here is I'm able to get a ventilated roof, but I'm actually ventilating underneath the plywood. This is kind of a hybrid. You know, most houses have uh, traditional vented roofs where you've got roof venting through the eaves, kind of like you're seeing here, that metal strip that's on the eave, and that's running through a ridge vent, but that's going through an unconditioned attic, and we're trying to avoid that here. We want a conditioned attic. That means that everything in my attic space is gonna be part of the air conditioned envelope of the house. In other words, my insulation is gonna be on the farthest reaches of my framing, and my roof will be unvented, meaning there'll be no airflow through the roof, but instead I've got airflow on top of the roof. So now I'm gonna have four inches of insulation up there. That's around R22 or so. And then anything I put inside will just bump that up. Now I could use spray foam, I could use rock wool bats, but the beauty of this system is I'm not worried about that insulation on the inside being an air barrier. It can just do its insulation duties because I've got that zip system sheathing from the foundation all the way to the ridge and back down again. My box is nice and airtight and then I'm putting the insulation on top just like I put my puffy jacket on. Now we do need to deal with our extremities, right? If it was really cold today, I'd have a hat on and I have some mittens on. And so if you saw my prior video, we're insulating on top of the slab. That's like putting my socks on. But this rooftop insulation is critical, especially in the south, because I've got so much heat coming or trying to come into the house from the sun baking the house. So having that R22 continuous on the roof deck, that's gonna make a massive difference to this house's comfort and the energy bills. Now, a couple things you need to think about when you're doing this system. 
And we need to think about this ahead of time, right? Because I need to frame this correctly. I don't want my rafter tails coming through. I've done that before with rafter tails coming through and to try and air seal that and make it as tight as you can, there's just miles of cracks. So this is a much, much better method. A couple other things you're gonna to wanna to notice. You need to think ahead of time about the materials you need. We had to screw that top layer of hunter panel all the way through all those layers and get those screws to embed at least an inch into the rafters below. So I had to think about that ahead of time. The hunter panels do make it a little easy though. You'll notice there's a green paint mark and that's where you're gonna sink a screw because there's a block in there. And that way you won't crush the panel. You don't wanna put a screw where there's not a block in there. Now eventually we're gonna put a metal roof on this house and eventually that metal roof will go right on top of my roof deck. Now I've already put my underlayment down. I'm using a uh, shark skin, which I found to be a really solid underlayment and I'm using their peel and stick version. So this is shark skin ultra SA or self adhering. So now I'm waterproof through all of construction. And now when my trades get through, I can come back and put my metal roof on but you've seen me in the past put my metal roof up on one by fours or space that up so that I've got an air gap underneath my metal roof. With this system, I don't have to do it anymore. And that's why I'm calling this Monopoly Framing 2.0. I think this style that I've got here where I've got that venting underneath my roof deck, that's gonna give me a little extra forgiveness. If I ever have a roof leak, it's gonna be able to dry in there. I think it's also saved me a little bit of labor and a little bit of time and materials by not having to do that one by four method underneath my roof. I've got a ventilated metal roof, but I can put it right down on my roof deck. Guys, big thanks to all my uh, friends and family that were involved in this project. The carpenters at Madera did an amazing job. The guys at Hunter Panel were fantastic to work with as I was thinking about the assembly and actually ordering those panels. They got onto me really quickly. And I gotta say, this Monopoly Framing 2.0 went really fast. This is only really the second time I've done this. But credit where credit's due. This is a, an idea I've been bopping around in my head for years. I actually first saw this idea uh, at a Joe Stebrick presentation. If you don't know him, he's probably the godfather of American building science. An amazing guy. He's the founder of Building Science Corporation, buildingscience.com. He wrote an article years ago, more than 10 years ago, called The Perfect Wall. And I built a house that was a perfect wall house many years ago, but now I'm calling it monopoly framing just because I think that makes a little bit more sense to kind of understand the concept. I'm hopeful that you'll think about this method for your houses. And I think this 2.0 method is maybe a slightly more economical way than the way I did my house. Now, if you're in the north though, remember you're gonna want more insulation than what I did here. This is the Zip R3 method that I used on the wall sheathing. If you're in the north, you wanna to go to a higher amount of insulation on your walls to make sure you've got a good thermal break at your studs. And if you're in the north, you also potentially wanna to go to a higher amount of insulation on your rooftop. But here in Texas, I'm in climate zone two. It's gonna make a giant difference. And I'm still gonna insulate the inside of my house with either rock wool bats or a combination of bats and possibly some closed cell spray foam. So I'm gonna have at least double the code mandated insulation on this house which I think is really the right thing to do for a house. You know, your clients, no matter how cool and how neat your design is, your clients are gonna remodel that kitchen in 20 years. They're probably gonna even change their windows potentially in 50 years, but how often do they remodel and rip out all their sheetrock and their insulation? Not very often. So if I can set that house up from the start with a really good system like Monopoly framing, where decades or maybe even centuries to come, this house is providing lasting energy efficiency and comfort to my clients. That's totally the way to go. Guys, thanks for joining me for this video. If you're not currently a subscriber, hit that subscribe button below. We've got new content here every Tuesday and every Friday. And also there'll be a link in the description to sign up for my newsletter. Every Friday, I'm gonna send you an email and show you what's new over at buildshownetwork.com. That's my network where I'm shooting videos and I've got four other contributors shooting videos from their job sites as well. Guys, follow me on Twitter or Instagram. Otherwise, we'll see you next time on The Build Show.